College football gambling picks. Week number five. That's right. That's right. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can bet on any of these games that we are about to talk about at any of their six sports books. Fitz Sportsbook is opening up this Friday, September 28th, 11 a.m. We will be there. We will be having a good time with all of our buddies down there. Gary Parrish from CBS Sports will be there as well. Uh, the other sports books in town, Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, the first jackpot, and, of course, the sports book at the Fitz. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. You can get our picks over at winningcureseverything.com. You can also put in your picks into our football picks contest at winningcureseverything.com. Go sign up this week. The prize is pretty magnificent. Two-night stay at Samstown, $100 dining certificate to Twain Steakhouse, and $50 in free slot play. Our winner last week got a two-night stay at Hollywood, along with $50 free slot play. That was Tim D. from South Carolina. He went 9-1. and one. All, all he needed was the Cowboys to cover, and he would have had a perfect week. He was the only one that went 9-1. and one. We did and have a listen, couple 8-2s. Just fade Jason Garrett. Believe that. Believe that. So, yeah, sign up. Go do it. Let's jump into this thing. You want to go first? You want me to? Uh, or here, let's talk about this. We both went three and four last week. Not yep. great weeks. No, wasn't wasn't disastrous. But I'm fourteen, thirteen and one so far on the year. You're thirteen, fourteen and one. Got a feeling we're getting it back though. We're coming back this week. We got this thing rolling. We we never stay down for long. You and I always end up about nine, ten, eleven, twelve games over five hundred by the end of the season. It's coming. I'm telling you, we're about to hit our streak. We're about to hit the stride. It's tough to bet on these opening games like the first three, four weeks. We rolling into week five now. Rolling into week five. I'm going to do my, my – I'm, I'm doing first. How's Go that? Ahead. I'm Far rolling away. first. First game, Army. I got them at plus nine. Right now, the lines that we are using are from Samstown down in Tunica this week. Line right now is plus eight. Army plus nine at Buffalo. Saturday, 11 a.m., CBS Sports Network. Army averages over 40 minutes time of possession per game. They are converting 52% on third down. Buffalo only converts 40% on third down. Buffalo gave up an average of 5.62 yards per play versus Temple and Eastern Michigan. Those are the two toughest teams they played. They're getting hype right now. Buffalo is for thrashing Rutgers last week, 42-13. to Look, Army is 7-3 and against the spread since last season as an underdog. The metrics say that this should only be Buffalo minus one and a half. They are over a touchdown favorite. Take Army plus the eight right now. Go to your bookie. Go to go to Tunica. Go wherever you need to and get money on this right now. Army plus eight. Roll with it. So I, for some reason, enjoy taking these big teams, these top four or five teams in the country, and betting against them when they lay these Big big numbers. I don't know why you do that, man. <laughs> I haven't done bad. No, no, you hadn't. You you bet against Alabama last week. Covered and that the A&M game. I covered uh, against Ohio, Oklahoma. I covered against Ohio State. Yeah, you've done all right. I'm doing terrible. Hey, I'm gonna cover against Clemson, <laughs> Syracuse, <laughs> plus twenty three and a half coming down to Clemson. Is it twenty three and a half now? Well, that's what keep I got. looking. I don't know what numbers you're. I didn't. I 20, didn't it's twenty two and a half at Samstown. I didn't get that sheet. I'm, I'm sorry. Not, I I'm not privy to the information that Gary's privy. I should have given you that. I, I got my buddies down in Tunica that provide that. Every yeah, week. they give they give Gary special treatment. Just in case y'all are wondering, guys. <laughs> anyway, Syracuse. I this Syracuse team is a lot of fun. Now I know they beat up on a really bad Florida State team, but I think they're good. I think they're really talented. Confidence does amazing I, things. I absolutely believe that. I think. They think they belong in the ACC. I believe them. I know they took a beating last week, but Boston College, these guys are are taking that next step to say, "Hey, we're here. You know, we're we're a part of this conference too, and 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 we're pretty good." Okay. Now, are they Clemson good? Probably not. Are they going to go into Clemson and and pull off an upset? Probably not. Can they cover twenty two points? I think so. Probably. I think they can score on Clemson. I think they can hold Clemson's off. Off Clemson obviously has got some issues at the quarterback position going on right now. A little bit of drama that's never fun, that's never good. I really like the Syracuse team a lot. What What do you think Clemson's going to do if uh, if Trevor Lawrence comes out and he's not good? Like, are they going to put Kelly Bryant back in the game? Yeah, I think so. I mean, would would 
like at Brian, I know is a good teammate and whatnot, but man, like I'd almost be like, you know, it's screw well, there you, was man. A, there was a report today that he talked to Dabo about transferring. So I think he's trying to transfer. I mean, it, it's only been, what, four games for him? Yeah, that's right. So if that's the case, like, holla at your boy. Like, I, if I got a year left, yeah. and don't play me anymore. That's right. Like, if, if I'm not your guy, don't play me. So, I can understand it. I, I like Syracuse. I think without the quarterback drama, I would take them at 22, 23 points. Um, with, with the it, quarterback drama, yeah. Yeah. So Game number two for me, Oregon at Cal. I got them at plus three and a half. That is what the line is right now. Cal at home, Saturday, 9.30 p.m., FS1. The metrics, my metrics, say that Cal should be a two-point favorite in this game. Now, I said before the season that I love the fact that Cal is coming off of a bye, and Oregon just had to deal with Stanford at home, and the fact that it was such an emotional loss, just heartbreaking at home, uh, makes you question everything, right? Like, those are the kind of losses, like, man, if we had done this different, if we had done this different. Like, look, the deal is Cal is 8-3 and three against the spread as an underdog under second-year coach Justin Wilcox. Oregon gave up 7.96 yards per play to Stanford. Cal is going to take advantage of the big play capabilities that they've got. Look, Cal loves to just run in the mud, run in the mud, and then, bam, before you even know what hits you, they're going to find a way to score. And I think they are going to do this all day against Oregon. I don't expect them to blow Oregon out. That's not what I'm saying. But I think Cal at home has the edge. They've got the emotional edge right now. I'm taking Cal to win this game straight up. And I almost took Oregon in my gambling picks. I really did. Because, you know, I like taking these teams that come off these big losses like that. Oh, yeah. Because I think it refocuses them. I think they're going to have the best practice. We could practice. The only reason I didn't. This is a 9.30 kickoff, Pac-12 after dark. Oh, yeah. I'm not taking a road team, Pac-12 after dark. I'm just not doing it. Believe it that. It has bit me in the ass way too many times. Well, the fact that I got I them. I cannot do it. The fact that I got them at at more than a field goal. Yeah. I mean, that, that made me feel even better. Just scary. Just scary. My next game. Look, I'm not giving up on you, Fuente. I know that was a bad <laughs> loss to the Monarchs, okay? Listen, we're going to write this ship. We're going to make this okay. I know Josh Jackson's gone, all right? He ain't coming back this week. Don't know when he'll be back, but we got to figure this thing out, okay? We're in this together. Everybody's off the boat. It's just you and me. I'm in it with you. Duke, got to go to Duke. Don't know that that's the craziest place in the world to play. It's not. Even, even though they're really good, they're ranked, they're undefeated. and I thought about taking Duke in this, but, like, they're – they're playing their backup quarterback because Daniel Jones is out. Uh, he's got a broken collarbone. And I still don't know what to make of this new quarterback. And they, they haven't exactly had to play anybody. That's that's the problem. Is I don't know what that – anyway. I stayed away from it. I think this Vatek defense is going to be so fired up after the complete debacle that was Saturday night. Yeah. They yeah. gave up like 700 yards to the Monarchs, okay? This is ridiculous. I think they're going to come out. I think Fuente's got these guys head on right. This is the most focused week of practice. This is exactly what I said about the Oregon game. If it wasn't Pac-12 after dark. What would you get Duke at? I got him at five. Five? Okay. I got yeah, Vitek plus five. This is, uh, let's see, Samstown has them Vitek plus five and a half. So you get a hook, doesn't matter. It's right there in the Vegas zone. It's, it's less than a touchdown. It's more, more than, than a field, field goal. goal. Yeah. Uh, game number three for me, UTEP at UT San Antonio. People are going to look at this and be like, what in the hell are you doing? What channel is this on? This is on ESPN+. Plus. you got to buy the extra package to be able to watch this one. Saturday at 6 p.m., ESPN+. Plus. Uh, go sign up for your free trial. They'll give you a, a month for free. So go check that thing out. It's only $5 you're, you're a month. You have college students Facebook Live in this game. That's hey, how you're going to have to watch this. That's pretty much it. The metrics say that UT San Antonio should be a 17.5-point favorite. Look, UTEP is 1-3 and three against the spread. UT San Antonio is 0-4 oh against the spread. UTSA has improved their rushing yardage every week. They are staying around 3.6 yards per carry. Look, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Both teams are really bad. And it, it, one of my rules is like that you don't bet on bad teams. But I picked this game solely because of the metrics. The line is off by more than seven points. Seven points. It says that UTSA should be a 17-and-a-half point favorite. 
Do we know that line is off? Do we know anything no, about we, those teams? We don't know anything I other than – I don't think than, the metrics can read these teams at all because they just have no clue. Here's the deal. I've been pretty successful with my numbers. That's good. Keep doing it. That's, if I'm not, they I'm are, not if it saying. is seven points difference, it tells me I'm going to be people, jumping all over. The people making the numbers don't know what they're doing. It's entirely possible. Either way, UTSA minus 10. Go jump on that bad boy. I think the line is actually 11 right now. Doesn't matter. If you Maybe. can get it under two touchdowns. It's not on that sheet. Roll with that. No, it is. It is. Keep, keep rolling. On there. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. UTSA minus 11. Yep. Game number three. University of Central Florida. Oh, I knew you were going to roll. I until, knew it. I knew until it. Until somebody, until they either make the line bigger than 14 or somebody holds them to less than taking a butt whipping more than two touchdowns. Mackenzie Melton. I am going to be betting University of Central Florida every week, like clockwork. Last week, I, I the number was too big, so I didn't put them in my gambling picks. What What do you think the props? Put in? a lot of money on it, and <laughs> I'm I'm telling you, I know I didn't do great in our gambling picks, but I got tickets to cash to say that Big Daddy made some money. Okay. Uh, if if you had a better prop, how many touchdowns do you think Mackenzie Melton would have this weekend? Oh, a lot. Do you think, think it's a like lot. over five and a half, it's over a, under five if, and a half? If you, if you put it at five, I would take the over. If you put it at six, I'd think about it and take the over. Yeah, I could believe that. I think they're just one of the most exciting teams to, to play, to watch in, in college football. And Pitt just Pitt, got beat by, by North Carolina. Yeah, Pitt's not real good. They're, they're not. They're a complete – shell of themselves and uh i don't know i don't know what you got to do to get this number over 14 but every time i keep looking they're they're more than they're less than 14 point favorites and they beat everybody by two touchdowns or more this one's got central florida minus 15 you still take 15 15? yeah i'd take them at 15 i got them at 13 and a half okay yeah it's it's 15 at samstown right now how high do you think you would go like 17 because it's probably going to get on up there. I'm, I might I might take him at three touchdowns. Whew, good gracious. Game number four for me, West Virginia at Texas Tech. Look, the line right now is four. I jumped on it early. I got it at three and a half. People love West Virginia right now, and that's fine. Saturday, 11 a.m., ESPN2. My metrics have Texas Tech favored by two points at home. Texas Tech is 23rd in the country with 30 tackles for loss. West Virginia's 20th with 31 tackles for loss. Both defenses are improved. This is West Virginia's first road game. They have not played a single threatening pass attack this entire season. Texas Tech is going to put everything on them. I am all about this. Alan Bowman, man, I'm rolling with him. I love Texas Tech here. I think they're going to win the game outright. I told you earlier, I'm taking. I'm going to be betting on Dana Holgerson. That's Will fine. Greer. That's okay. In the Musketeers. <laughs> is that any, is that your gambling pick? No, that's not my okay. gambling pick. Not, I, I said earlier in a pick, so that's not my gambling pick. Give me Will Muschamp. Give me Will Muschamp. I know that Kentucky has looked unbelievable. And Kentucky at home has looked even better. And Kentucky has won four straight against South Carolina. I don't care. Give me Will Muschamp. Give me Debo Samuels taking the top off the defense. Scoring on this defense, opening the game up for the run game. They're going to take over. They're going to play good defense. It's going to be a low-scoring game. But I, I'm i going with the Gamecocks. I'm way too high on them before the season. I'm not getting up that train yet. They got one bad loss the whole season. That is, that, that's, to, that's to Georgia. That's Georgia it. is a different level. That's different. That's just different. Yeah. Kentucky's not Georgia. They're going to win this game. They're going to finish second in the in the East. Now, you brought up Georgia. So, I'm going to talk about Georgia State. Oh. <laughs> Louisiana Monroe at Georgia State. Georgia State is a 7.5-point underdog. I think the line might be 8 right now, uh, at least at Samstown. It's 8. Uh, Saturday, 1 p.m., another ESPN Plus game. Woohoo! My metrics have ULM as only a one-point favorite in this game. The line is over a touchdown. Both teams have underperformed against Power 5 competition. Uh, they are very average against G5 competition. Georgia State being at home behind quarterback Dan Ellington, they should keep this within a touchdown easily. I love this game. Georgia State, uh, Georgia State plus 7.5. 
Roll with it. The line I got for South Carolina earlier was two. Doesn't matter what the number is. If they're catching points, they're going to win the game. It's uh, it's one at Samstown, That's according to uh, the sheet. Now, obviously, the lines, the, the lines will change. Go up and talk to the attendant. That's all you got to do. Just don't be shy. Go tell them, hey, I want this team. Pull up one of these sheets here. Tell them, hey, I want number da 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 da. Can you tell me what that updated line is? They will fill you in on what's up. We'll we'll roll with it. All right. So you know how I like betting on teams coming off of bad losses because I think it focuses them. Okay. Well, that's that's there's a caveat that I like betting on good teams coming off of bad losses. Are we getting back into another one of your picks? Yeah. Okay. Because you just have one. No, I did uh, Georgia, did Georgia State, State, and then oh yeah, I did. So go ahead. I'm sorry. My bad, sorry, y'all. Skip me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A bad team coming what off a bad loss. I'm just fine. Just keep kicking them until they show you they're alive. Give me my boy Jeff Brom. Give me the guys at Purdue going into Cornhusker Stadium, going into Nebraska. They're gonna whip their butt. I'm laying four. I don't care. I think Jeff Brom's got this thing figured out. I got it. I think they got it rolling. They had three bad losses before they finally got a W. And I just don't think Nebraska has got any life at all. I mean, if you put Nebraska and and UCLA and Florida State all in a stadium and threw a football in the middle of it and said, just somebody show me something. Yeah, I, this one, I yeah, yeah samstown has got over. Purdue minus three. I'll take three. I'll take four. <laughs> like, I take a touchdown. I think I think Jeff Brom has got it rolling. The games they lost, they have lost by so little. They were in every one of those three, games. They were 0 and 3 with all their losses, a combined eight points. Yeah, I was about to say it was almost yeah. less than a touchdown. Yeah, eight points. That was it. A little more than a touchdown. It's uh, crazy. Crazy. I, I love Purdue, and I'm going to keep fading Nebraska until they show me they have any life at all. Game number six for me Old Dominion at East Carolina. East Carolina minus seven. Samstown's got it at five and a half. I don't care. Look, Saturday, two thirty p.m. ESPN three. You gotta have to. You're gonna have to stream this one. Old Dominion's win against Vitek at home. That gave us a very favorable line. ECU should be favored by eleven, twelve points. ODU gave up. They not gave up. They give up every game over five hundred yards a game, over thirty five points a game. ECU beat up on an ACT team way before ODU did, way before that. Because they, they stomped on uh, on North Carolina like three weeks ago. Uh, ECU is going to score a ton of points. Those are not the same ACC now, teams, by the way. Now that just, there is film on La Russa, I don't think that ODU is going to be able to keep up in this ball game. East Carolina will score at will. Take East Carolina minus the seven or at Samstown minus five and a half. That's a much better line there. Uh, but it, I don't think it matters. East Carolina is going to win this by double digits. Won't even be close. My next to last pick, going to back to one of the big games. Give me the Iris going up against Stanford. I think Notre Dame has got their quarterback. Book it. Book is the man. He's going to be the guy. I think this offense is about to open up. They're going to spread it out. I got him at four and a half. That's exactly what Sam Stanford okay. does. That's what, I, that's what I had that earlier today. Stanford is winning these games ugly. <laughs> yeah. And I just don't trust them. Now, I know Notre Dame hadn't looked great against Vanderbilt. They hadn't looked great against Wake Forest. But but those two teams are normally bad, being a lot better the last couple of years. Well, not last year, Vanderbilt. But Wake Forest is, is, is not your same old Wake Forest team. Man, I, I think this Notre Dame team's figuring it out. Everybody has shut down Bryce Love. I have no reason to see why Notre Dame won't as well. Um, I, I can't figure that out for the life of me. But all they have to do is contain Stanford. I think they can do that. That defense has played pretty well. Um, I don't know, man. I, I like Notre Dame a lot. I don't normally – I'm not a Brian Kelly fan as a person, as a coach. He's a pretty good coach. I'm taking a home team. I can roll with it. Uh, my last game, Temple at Boston College. Temple plus 14 at Boston College. Saturday, 11 a.m., ESPNU. Again, my metrics, uh, they say that uh, this should be about a six-point line. The last two games, Temple's only given up 3.76 yards per play. They shut down Maryland. Nobody else has been able to shut down Maryland. Uh, They are averaging 5.31 yards per play in the last two. Boston College showed last week that they can be schemed out. Purdue held them to only 229 yards total offense and 3.63 yards per play. 
Now, they did have turnovers in that game. Temple has been creating some turnovers this year. Look, I know it sounds crazy. I'm not going to come out and say that Temple is going to win the ball game, but I think they will be fired up for this one. They're going to keep it closer than the 14-point line easily. You got me one more? Last one. I'm going down. My boy O. In Baton Rouge. Got the old Miss coming in town. I got 12 was the number I found. I don't know what it is at Samstown, but uh, I think they're going to be fired up for 12 this 12 at game. Samstown. Ole Miss has kind of played some of their weaker opponents real close. The one good opponent, you got to throw that game out because nobody's playing Alabama close. LSU, and the win over Texas Tech is a little deceiving because that's not the same Texas Tech that, that is playing right now. Well, that that's the one thing that, that – threw me off and I wanted to stay as far away as I can because I normally don't like putting my team in my gambling picks but I just don't care I think O's got something to prove I think this Ole Miss offense is rolling I think they got it figured out and I absolutely think this defense is going to be able to contain Ole Miss those receivers are big outside of Alabama nobody's shutting those guys down so Ole Miss is going to score yeah okay but I think I think LSU can hit the quarterback I think we can get to the quarterback and and I, Kent I think, State had them had them wrapped up pretty good last week. Yeah. I think LSU can definitely shut them down. Oh no, yeah. our pressure is going to be a whole lot different than what Kent State put on them. I agree with that. So I'm get, I'm going with my boy. Oh, I don't like to take them. I wish it wasn't as big of a number over a touchdown. It's twelve. Okay, doesn't matter. Beat them by two touchdowns. I can get down with that. That's all right, we're giving you all the information you need to go be a winner. Head down to Tunica. Get some action down on your favorite plays. As always, visit uh, tunicatravel.com for more information. Go get our picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Enter the picks contest. Roll that thing.